We have got ourselves a big kid slate tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball, not just because it's 11 games and it's Friday, but also because some of the names at pitcher here are absurd. Really good options pretty much across the board. So you can feel pretty good about your choices. The problem is deciding which of those choices to go with, given we can only use one pitcher on FanDuel.com. So we'll break down my top pitching options for today uh, among all the choices. We'll talk some stacks and get you ready to hopefully start your weekend on a high note. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Friday's 11-game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. There is just one weather note on the slate, uh, actually two. There's a chance of rain in Boston for the Red Sox and Mets. I would bet they'd be able to play through that, but check back on that later. And also a slight chance of rain in New York for the Yankees and the Royals. Again, I think that one should be okay to go. But uh, overall, should be good to go for this slate. I would note in Texas, the roof will likely be closed for the Rangers and Dodgers. So slight downgrade to offense there as a result, but... I do still think we'll want to check out some offenses in that game. We'll talk about that more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, do not forget that the solo shot goes up every weekday on the FanDuel YouTube app and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. The U.S. women's soccer team is taking on the world, and you can take home bonus bets every time they win with FanDuel. Because right now, new customers get $100 in bonus bets guaranteed, plus another $10 in bonus bets for every Team USA win. Sign up between now and August 3rd. Then, place your first $5 bet to unlock your bonus bets. That All tournament long, however you want to play, don't miss your chance to get $10 in bonus bets for every Team USA win, uh, plus $100 in bonus bets guaranteed. Make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets, which expire in seven days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Massachusetts. Hope is here. Gambling helpline MA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, one 877 8 wire text open y In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. Frambert Valdez checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $11,200, followed by Kode Senga at 10-4. We got Shohei Otani as a pitcher at 10-2, followed by Joe Ryan at 10,000. Freddie Peralta is 94 with Lance Lynn at 92. Bryce Miller is 91 with Ranger Suarez, J.P. Sears, Gavin Williams, Michael Soroka, Andrew Heaney, Tommy Henry, Johan Oviedo, and Clark Schmidt as the others at $8,000 or higher. As you heard there, there are a lot of great names on this list. And there are a good number of guys you could put number one. And I feel like you could back up those arguments pretty well. But I feel good about putting Joe Ryan first on my list for tonight. He will be my top pitcher on FanDuel. He's facing the White Sox at home. The White Sox still trying to find their footing offensively. They have an 89 a WRC plus against righties with a 156 ISO. They're not a huge strikeout team. They're not going to boost you in that regard. but Ryan brings the strikeouts himself. Across 19 starts this year, Joe Ryan has a 29% strikeout rate with just a 5% walk rate. So the plate discipline numbers are very good. Bad at ball data is not elite, but the matchup does help there because, again, the White Sox, not the most powerful team. Ryan has had double-digit strikeouts four times this year. He had nine and three others, and his strikeout rate does go up at home, which is where he's at for tonight. My model has Ryan projected for 7.2 strikeouts here. That is a very good number. And I think 
when you combine that with the matchup, combine it with being at home, I think there's enough here to make Joe Ryan our number one pitcher of the night. So to me, Joe Ryan, number one, even on a loaded slate, a pitcher on FanDuel for this Friday. Right above Ryan in salary is Shohei Otani. And he's dealing with a blister. And it had this start in question for a bit. But they did announce pretty early Thursday that Otani would be good to start. And because that announcement came decently early, it does up my confidence in Otani here. So I think that we should rank him number two behind Ryan. And Otani definitely has not been at his sharpest recently. He walked four guys in his final start before the All-Star break. He walked five, a couple starts before that, and he walked three last time out. So the control for Otani has definitely not been there. But the strikeouts have. He had 12 strikeouts against the Dodgers, 10 against the White Sox. Both those games came in June, and he had seven while dealing with the blister last week. So Otani is volatile, and that's not fun for 10-2. High salary for a guy who could have a pretty rough night, but it's hard to argue many guys on this slate have more upside than Otani has. He's facing the Pirates at home. They have a 98 WRC plus against righties with a 23% strikeout rate, and they do draw walks. So if you're looking for an ideal matchup for Otani, this is not going to be it. But with Ryan being the cash game guy, at least for me tonight, I feel okay taking a swing for upside in tournaments, and that swing to me does lead me to Shohei Otani. So to me, it's Joe Ryan one for cash games and for tournaments, and Shohei Otani number two explicitly for tournaments for tonight. I thought about one guy who could fly to the radar. It could be kind of interesting and things to watch later on. Among the value plays, my favorite option is Yusei Kikuchi. FanDuel technically has Kevin Gosman listed as a starter for the Jays right now, but it will be Kikuchi based on all reports. So Kikuchi's salary is $8,600. Scroll down, uh, toggle off the only probable pictures if it's still showing Gosman there to find Kikuchi later on. And Kikuchi could have bad games, for sure. He could blow up at any moment. And he doesn't get a huge pitch count leash either, but... I do think his upside is pretty good. It's a revenge game here. What else could you want? Is he's facing the Mariners. And they do bring a lot of upside to opposing pitchers. The Mariners have a 27% strikeout rate against lefties on the current active roster. So that's a boost for Kikuchi there. And he has been pretty good himself as well. Over his past nine starts, Kikuchi's been throwing fewer changeups. And he has a 3.66 ERA in that time. Yes, I said his ERA first because with Kikuchi... I do care more about his results than most guys because he's had good peripherals a bunch of times in his career, but he never converted that into good results. But it looks like he's doing that, at least for right now, over a nine-star sample. And the peripherals for Kikuchi are still good. He has a 3.91 skill interactive ERA in that time with a 27% strikeout rate. Kikuchi has had seven plus strikeouts in four of those nine games. And two of those starts where he had uh, seven plus strikeouts came in his four starts on the road. So Kikuchi could get rocked. The Mariners have a lot of good hitters, but I think it's the right play. Kikuchi has upside. That's kind of hard to turn down for 86. So to me, if you want a value, I would go use a Kikuchi. I do prefer the studs in Ryan and Otani, but Kikuchi well worth consideration if you want extra flexibility at hitter for today. Part of the reason I don't care too much about saving at pitcher is because the stacking options are not super high salaried in large part because we're on the Giants once again. Now, I've been on the Giants a couple times this week, and it has flopped several times, but they're in another good matchup tonight, and the weather in Washington is good for hitting. So I think we'll want to give them one more shot and stack them once again here. They're on the road facing the Nationals, which means they're facing Jake Irvin. And Irvin, to his credit, does some stuff really well. And I want to give him credit for that. But it hasn't kept him from having a a largely pretty rough year. Across 13 starts, Irvin has a 5.46 skill interactive ERA. Now, his results are better than that. And I think that his results are sustainably better than his peripherals. Because Irvin has done a very good job of suppressing hard contact. And that is a skill, and it is a great skill to have. And it's helped Irvin from imploding. But he's still gotten in trouble, as evidenced by his 5.11 expected ERA. More recently, he's been leaning even more heavily on his sinker. But he let up four runs to the Cardinals last time out. He can get bounced around. The Giants, very tough matchup for a righty with a 111 WRC plus and a 174 ISO. And again, the park is great for tonight. So I think we should stack them here, even with the mixed results they've had this week. And I think the Giants are at least in the mix for the top stack of the night. 
part of the reason potentially they struggled, maybe this is me excuse making, but they've been kind of banged up. Lamont Wade Jr. has missed two consecutive games. Same for J.D. Davis. Wade does it for power against righties. He can swipe a bag or two. So my hope with stacking is that Wade is back in there for tonight because I do want to get him in there. He's a key part of a stack. I'm more indifferent about Davis, but it would be nice to get him back too to just add more options. But uh, Lamont Wade would like to get him back to give me a bit more confidence in the Giants given that they've had some issues offensively throughout this week. For the number two stack, let's talk here about Tony, Tony Gonsolin because the past couple of years, Gonsolin has gotten by, similar to Irvin, by suppressing hard contact. And it made him much better than his peripherals. And I think that Gonsolin actually was underappreciated because those peripherals were not awe-inspiring. But this year, the bad at ball data is not as good, and his results are starting to slip. And I think it means we can stack the Rangers against him tonight, despite the fact the roof will be closed in Arlington. Gonsolin, for the full season, has a 3.72 ERA, which is still pretty good but it's definitely not the 2.14 mark he had last year. His ground ball rate is down. His hard hit rate is up to 37%. And as a result, his expected ERA is 4.88. almost, And it's almost exactly in line with his 4.92 skill interactive ERA. Now, to his credit, Gonsolin seems to realize this. He's had decent results, but it does seem like he's tinkering to try to get back on the right track. He's been throwing fewer sliders and more curveballs across his past eight starts. So he's tinkering, but it's not working because Gonsolin's still letting up a 37% hard hit rate with a 38% fly ball rate in this time. He has a 4.91 skill interactive ERA, and his ERA is up to 5.02. Gonsolin has let up four plus earned runs in four of those eight games, and that's while making five of the eight starts at home. Now he goes on the road to face the Rangers, who are a very dangerous offense with a 121 WRC plus against righties. That's the highest mark on the slate. So again, the roof will be shut tonight, and that does downgrade bats, but I still think we should stack the Rangers in this matchup, given the issues Gonsolin has had. And Gonsolin's issues, the bat of all numbers, pretty even between righties and lefties, which gives us kind of the green light to use our preferred targets here, and I love that for the Rangers, given they have really fun righties and lefties we want to use. So... I think we got a lot of reasons to be high on the Rangers for tonight. I took their money line as well, because I think that they should be, you know, uh, more highly viewed in this spot. So the Rangers, to me, a good stack for tonight. We'll talk about the other side of the game and things to watch. But first, we got to talk about our third stack. And I apologize in advance because it ain't great. The Yankees offense stinks against righties. We know this. We've been accounting for this for a while. We've been using pitchers against them happily, like Chase Silseth at $5,500 against them earlier on this week. But they're facing Alec Marsh at Yankee Stadium. Marsh has had some big batted ball issues in the majors, and I think that means we should stack the Yankees as gross as it may feel. Marsh so far has made three appearances, which is not a big sample. His ERA is 5.40, so not leaping off the page, but... He has let up a 47% hard hit rate in that time with a 54% fly ball rate. You combine that and it leads to an expected ERA of 5.68. Now, in Marsh's defense, he's faced some really good teams who make a lot of hard contact. And it's worth noting that. And the Yankees are very much not that right now. But this is also a guy who is in his age 25 season, began that age 25 season in double A, didn't have great results there, and now he's in the big leagues. So I don't think it's unreasonable to expect some struggles from Marsh. So yeah, I'd love to not stack the Yankees against the righty, but I do think there is enough here to justify stacking them tonight. We'll just want to be careful with the guys we use because not a lot of depth in this lineup right now, but the Yankees, I think do have enough here to rank number three. The Yankees is a team 141 ISO against righties in the active roster. So when we're picking the guys in our stack, we do want to be selective guys who have power or who steal bases. Labor Torres has some power. He steals bases. Giancarlo Stanton back to stroking it off of uh, the all-star break. His ISO back up to 209 against righties. Oswell Peraza has run in the majors and he hit for power in triple A. And he's batting leadoff. So for $2,300, kind of hard to hate on that. So the Yankees, pretty clear value stack again, which is why it's easy to get to Ryan and Otani, even if you want to get to uh, the Rangers as a stack. The cupboard here is not totally barren for the Yankees. So we just have to be selective when going to that cupboard because we want to make sure we're not using guys with minimal upside when stacking this team. 
Things to watch for tonight. We talked about Joe Ryan before, but I think the other side of that game is also kind of interesting. That's Lance Lynn, who has been on a strikeout binge with a 35% strikeout rate in six starts since he started throwing a curveball. The Twins, more than happy to strike out. So it's risky because it is Lance Lynn on the road against a very good offense. But if you're okay with that risk, I think Lynn is a phenomenal tournament play. So Lance Lynn... Worth a look for tonight in MLB DFS. I think the Nationals could be interesting as a stack as well. They're facing Alex Wood, who hasn't had his typical batted ball suppression this year. He has a 5.21 ERA across nine outings with fewer sliders. The Nats, not a bad team against lefties with a 108 WRC+. plus. They got a low strikeout rate, so I think they're at least worth a look. Uh, maybe they won't keep the 108 WRC+, plus against lefties overall, but... Doing enough to make me at least intrigued by them for tonight. Finally, the Dodgers get Andrew Heaney, another revenge game on this slate. Heaney has been a lot better recently, and the batted ball data has improved. But he is still letting up a 42% hard hit rate in 11 starts with his slot usage being back up. The Dodgers have a 236 ISO against lefties, so I think we'd be silly not to at least consider them in this spot. Um, I think the Dodgers... Not as high as the Rangers for me, because I do like the Rangers quite a bit, but definitely in consideration given that Heaney can still let up a tank or two. Let's finish up with the dinger calls for today. The boring one is Giancarlo Stanton. I believe three home runs since the All-Star break. He has been getting back slowly to Giancarlo Stanton of old. The barrels have been there all year, but finally converting those into home runs. So at home against a five ball pitcher, letting up a lot of hard contact. I got to go Giancarlo Stanton as the boring home run call. For the fun one, let's go Lane Thomas, facing the lefty. Thomas is not a value play. He actually has a higher salary than Giancarlo Stanton, but still a more fun dinger call uh, facing off against Alex Wood, who, again, has not had the best batted ball data this year. So we'll go Giancarlo Stanton and Lane Thomas as our dinger calls for tonight. That's all we have here for today on the solo shot. Later on today and covering the spread, we'll be talking to Pitching Ninja, Rob Freeman, picking his brain on the pitching options for tonight, talking some strikeout props, who will lead the night in strikeouts, and much more. Get that over on covering the spread. And don't forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you once again next week. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.